Hello and welcome to another episode of Kodo Cinema, the podcast show where I talk about movies. I'm your host, Mark Kodo, a.k.a. Kodo Man. Well, we are finally here for, for a new year and for a new season. This is season 6 of Kodo Cinema. And to kick off season 6 of Kodo Cinema, I'm going to talk about the 81st Golden Globe Awards. The 81st Golden Globe Awards honored the best in film and American television productions of 2023. Before I go further into the Golden Globes, I just want to I just want to let everybody know that I'm only going to focus on the movie topics. That means you won't be able to hear the television topics. So don't expect to hear television shows like Succession, The Bear, Only Murders in the Building, The Crown, Fargo, The Last of Us, 1923 in this episode. Plus, I'm also excluding best performance in stand-up comedy on television, so don't ex- so don't expect to hear uh, Ricky Gervais Armageddon in this episode. Okay, so let me go further more into the 81st Golden Globe Awards. So the ceremony was broadcast live on January 7th of 2024 from the Beverly Hilton in Beverly Hills, California, which began at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS, and it was streamed on Paramount Plus in the United States. It was produced by Dick Clark Productions, Ricky Kirshner, and Glenn Weiss, the latter who also served as director. This was the first ceremony after Dick Clark Productions and Eldridge Industries took full control of the Golden Globes from the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. The ceremony was also the first to air live on CBS in the United States since 1982, and the host for the Golden Globe Awards is Joel, is Joel Coy. And I'll be honest with you, I, kn- I don't even know who Joel Coy is. Although, to put it pl- now, to put now to give us some context, Joel Coy is an American stand-up comedian and actor, and he was a frequent panelist on E's late night show Chelsea Lately. And he has since had a total of six comedy specials that were released by Comedy Central and Netflix. And uh, going back to the Golden Globes, Koi hosted the 81st Golden Globe Awards. Now, Joe Koi as a host, let's just say his performance was not that great. His his hosting abilities was not that great, in my personal opinion. Like, for those who have seen the Golden Globes on Sunday... Or who have watched the Golden Globes on Sunday? Joe Coy's monologue was met with criticism from viewers and critics, with many describing his jokes as cringeworthy, painful, and unfunny. And of course, some people even described his monologue as awkward and distasteful. To me, in my personal opinion, his monologue was awkward. In my personal opinion, like at one point when I. First heard of Joe when I first heard of Joe Coy, that was from this that was from this award show. The eighty first Golden Globes. I was like, Who? Who is Joe Coy? Well of course, obviously he's an actor and stand up comedian. But uh, to be fair, his monologue was very awkward and his jokes were not that and his jokes were not that great. Many people noted Coy's jokes drew groans and boos from the audience. Among jokes that drew the most ire were those about the film Barbie and attending nominees that included Robert De Niro, Meryl Streep, and Taylor Swift, with to which the latter's reaction went viral. And in case you didn't know what was the rea- the the reaction to uh, Taylor Swift was, it was Taylor Swift getting giving a very stern face while also taking a sip from her drink, and that was from the camera shot from the 81st Golden Globes. And um, and then of course, moving on from from the host, we should definitely talk about the winners of the 81st Golden Globes in the movie category. Like I said, we're doing we're talking about the movie category, not the t- we're talking about the movie topics. We're talking about the we're talking about the movies, not the TV shows. All right, just let everybody know. Okay, okay. So starting off with best motion picture. Now this one would be best motion picture in drama. Now the win now. The winner for that category went to Oppenheimer, which was directed by Christopher Nolan and started Killian Murphy as J. Robert Oppenheimer, and Oppenheimer won for Best Motion Picture in the Drama category, and it beat out Anatomy of a Fall, Killers of the Flower Moon, which was directed by 
Martin Scorsese, Maestro, which is, which is basically the biopic of uh, Leonard Bernstein, which was directed, which which starred and directed by Bradley Cooper, um, Past Lives, and The Zone of Interest. Now, to me, I thought this was a good choice. I mean, I thought that I thought that was a good pick for Oppenheimer to win Best Picture in the Drama category. Although it would be a tough competition. Although it is going to be a tough competition to what the Oscars will look like for for Oppenheimer to be nominated. Now, although the nominations for the Oscars are coming out soon, but I'm pretty sure Oppenheimer will make that will make the list for Best Picture. So, congratulations to Oppenheimer for winning for winning Best Motion Picture Drama. Now, to the musical or comedy side of things for Best Picture, you got Poor Things, which starred. Uh, Emma, which starred Emma Stone. You got uh, the movie, the movie Air, which is basically the, uh, uh, which is a sports bio, which is a sports biopic that that is based on the true events about the origin of Air Jordan, to which, um, to which you know where Michael Jordan uh, signs signs a uh, seek, seeks to strike a business deal, seeks to strike a business deal with with Nike, or should I say, uh, Nike a Nike employee. Seeks to strike a business deal with rookie player Michael Jordan, and then you also got American Fiction, which star which starred uh, Jeffrey Wright, who was also nominated. Then you got the movie Barbie, directed by Greta Gerwig and starring Margot Robbie. The Holdovers, that star The Holdovers, starring Paul Giamatti, and of course May December. Now, nothing much to say about Poor Things. I haven't seen Poor Things, although I have seen Barbie and The Holdovers. I really want, I mean, I wanted to see Air, but I never came around to that movie. But other than that, I mean, nothing, mu- no- nothing much to say, but congratulations to Poor Things for winning, for winning Best Motion Picture for Musical or Comedy. Now, moving over to the animated side of things for Best Animated Feature Film. Now, this one, this one, I was down to two films. For, to win the Gold Globe, and that would be The Boy and the Heron and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I had Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse to win, but unfortunately, The Boy and the Heron took the win. And The Boy and the Heron is a Jap is a 2023 Jap- Japanese animated fantasy film, which was written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki and produced by Studio Ghibli, to which um, to which Studio Ghibli has created, animated, and created s- some of the best anime feature films you have seen like Spirited Away, Ponyo, Princess Mononoke, among many other Japanese anime films from Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli. But to be fair, I mean The Boy and the Heron is from what I heard is a very good Japanese anime film. As as much as as much as I want Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse to win, I got to give I got to give points to The Boy and the Heron. And especially Hayao Miyazaki, plus the Boy and the Heron. As I met the Boy and the Heron, beat it, beat it out Disney Pixar's Elemental, to which I heard good things about. Although I haven't seen that one, but I I heard some people did not like the movie as much. And Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, which which I have already mentioned, good, very good, very good, very good movie, very good follow up, I should say. Looking forward to the third. Looking forward to uh, looking forward to the third Spider-Man Spider Spider-Verse movie, the Super Mario Brothers. Oh my goodness! I mean, I was actually surprised the Super Mario Brothers got a Golden Globe nomination. I mean, I really enjoy. I really had fun. I had a lot of fun watching the Super Mario Brothers movie, and in my opinion, that it literally deserved the recognition. It and it got the recognition it deserved. So, so good for that film, Suzumi. Which is basically a Japanese animated coming of age fantasy adventure film, and then of course, the boy and the heron beat out Disney's Wish. I'm just surprised that Wish got the recognition because I saw Wish in theaters with my brother Disney's Wish, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I, in my personal opinion, I did not like the movie as much. I I did not like the movie. I did not like. I did not like Disney's Wish as much. I know there's going to be some defend. I know there's going to be some defenders out there who will enjoy Disney's Wish, and that is totally fine. But to me, I did not. I did not like. I didn't enjoy this movie at all. 
Now that's a that now that will be a future movie reveal that I will talk about in a later episode. Okay, moving forward, we're going to non non English language, or should I say, or should I say, best foreign language film, and the winner in that category will be Anatomy of the Fall, which is from France, and it beat out Fallen Leaves from Finland, Io Capit- Capitano from Italy. Past Lives from the United States, Society of the Snow from Spain, and The Zone of Interest from the United Kingdom, Poland, and the United States. Nothing much to say, moving forward. Now the next category will be Cinematic and Box Office Achievements. And this is another this is a category where I'm actually surprised it became a thing because because I, I I'm wanting this is a category I'm I'm really surprised to hear because when it comes to different categories you get like best actor best actress best supporting actor best supporting actress best best music best best anime feature film among many other categories but what about best voice actress or best voice actor or even best stunt work or best soundtrack where are those categories I want to see those categories in the future. That would be awesome to see. Now, cinematic and box office achievement typically is basically the films that were able to achieve box office success, I believe. But anyway, I think the most obvious one to take home the win for, for best cinematic and box office achievement for the Golden Globes will go to Barbie. Yes, Barbie took home the win for best cinematic and box office achievement because it made... Oh, because it made over 1.4 billion dollars, 1.4 billion dollars, beating out Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which made 845.6 million dollars. The only, the only Marvel movie from Phase Five to make its money back. And of course, it also beat out John Wick Chapter Four, which to which I heard a lot, of, uh, to which I heard good things, good things about. And John Wick Chapter 4 made $440.1 million. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, which surprisingly which surprisingly bombed, but it made $567.5 million worldwide. And then of course, Oppenheimer, can't forget Oppenheimer, the famous Barbenheimer, Barbie Oppenheimer, to which Oppenheimer made $955.2 million. I mean, very good, very, I mean, obviously, good achievement for Christopher Nolan, even though, hey, hey, the, the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises made a billion dollars, but hey, still a good, still a good achievement, though. And then, of course, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which actually made $690.5 million, becoming Zony Picture Animation's highest grossing animated film in their animated studio. And then, of course, uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie, which made $1.36 billion, which is, which, is based, which is now considered to be the highest grossing film based on a video game. And then, of course, Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour, which made $261.6 billion, and is basically a concert film. That film became the highest grossing concert film of all time. For now. All right, nothing much. Just, and oh, by the way, the Cinematic and Box Office Achievement Award it was actually presented. It was actually presented by Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill presented the the award presented the award for Cinematic and Box Office Achievement. So, so that's actually pretty nice that Mark Hamill was able to present that category. Now moving forward is the acting category. So best performance in a, so we're going to start off with best performance in a motion picture drama. Now, go, now starting with best actor for best performance in motion pic. So starting with best actor in best performance in motion picture. So, so the winner in that category went to Killian Murphy for 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 his role of J. Robert Oppenheimer from from Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, and Killian Murphy beat out Bradley Cooper from Maestro as Leonard Bernstein. Leonardo DiCaprio for Killers of the Flower Moon as Ernest Burkhart, Cloman Domingo for Rustin as Bay as Bayard Rustin, Bayard Rustin, and then of course Barry Keoghan for Saltburn as Oliver Quick and Andrew Scott from All the Strangers as Adam. 
Now, seeing seeing Killian Murphy as uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, I'm going to be honest with you, Killian Murphy really knocked it out of the ballpark. And he was a very good he was a very good choice to play J. Robert Oppenheimer. Him and him and Chris he and Christopher Nolan did a fantastic job with that movie. Now, now I haven't seen Maestro nor Killers of the Flower Moon. I heard both of these films are very good. Like, uh, like I'm, I'm, I really want to see. Actually, I'm leaning in more on the Leonard Bernstein biopic Maestro because I mean I'm, a, I'm a music guy. I'm a music guy myself. I mean I kind of know who he is. I know he's a very he is a famous uh, he's a va- famous uh, composer for music. So I kind of know who he is. To which to which I want kind of to which I want why I want to see this movie, Killers of the Flower Moon. I mean as interesting as interesting as this movie is. I mean. Martin Scorsese really needs to trim down his run times. But other than that, let's move forward to... Um, but other than that, um, another thing for Killers of the Flower Moon came in, and that would be, be Lily Gladstone, who won for Best Actress in a... for one Best Actress for, a, for Motion Picture Drama. Lily Gladstone played Molly Burkhart, who is the wife to... Uh, Ernest Burkhardt and uh, Lily Gladstone beat out Annette Bening for Nyad as Diana as Diana Nyad, Sandra Holler for Anatomy of a Fall as Sandra Voiter, Greta Lee Past Lies as Dora Boone, Carrie Mulligan from My Sh- who played Leonard Bernstein's wife Felicia Bernstein, and Kaylee Sp- Sp- Spaney as Priscilla Presley from the bio from the biopic. Priscilla, and for those of you who probably may, may or may not know, Priscilla is the ex-wife to uh, to lit to the great late American singer Elvis Presley. So anyway, congratulations to Lily Gladstone and Killian Murphy for their for their for their uh, Golden Globe awards. Now we move over to best performance in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. So so the best actor winner. So for best actor in musical or comedy, we'll go to Paul Giamatti for the holdovers. And I actually saw the holdovers, really enjoyed the movie. And Paul Giamatti beat out Nicolas Cage for Dream Scenario as Dr. Paul Matthews. Timothy Chalamet for the Wonka movie as Willy Wonka. Fun fact, the the Wonka movie that Timothy Chalamet was in, that was actually a fun film. Highly recommend that, highly recommend that movie. Matt Damon for Air as Sun- as Sonny Vaccaro, Joaquin Phoenix for Bo is Afraid as Bo Wasserman, and Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction as Thelonious Monk Elias. El- Ellis as Thelonious Monk Ellis. So congratulations to Paul Giamatti for winning hit for winning for for winning the Golden Globe for the holdovers. Now moving on to Best Actress, the winner in that the winner in that category will go to Emma Stone. For poor things as Bella Baxter, and Emma Stone beat out Fantasia Barrino for The Color Purple, Jennifer Lawrence for No Hard Feelings, Natalie Portman for May December, Alma Poisty for Fallen Leaves, and Margot Robbie for Barbie. I'm actually surprised that Margot Robbie got a Golden Globe nomination for Barbie. Now Margot Robbie, I gotta give credit to Margot Robbie. She she played a fantastic. Barbie, stereotypical Barbie, I should say. The main Barb, the main Barbie that you see in this, the main Barbie that you see in this movie, and and Margot Robbie really knocked it out of the ballpark. As as good of a job that she gives, gotta give it to Emma Stone for poor things. Now moving forward to best supporting performance in a motion picture, and we go to supporting actor now. The winner for supporting actor and best supporting performance in a motion picture will go to Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer as Louis Strauss, beating out Willem Dafoe for Poor Things, Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon, Ryan Gosling for Barbie as Ken, Charles Melton for May December, and Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things. I mean, Robert Robert De Niro and Ryan Gosling going 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 toe to toe with each other. Sounds sounds like sounds like competition, but Robert Downey Jr. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. in Oppenheimer. I say that was one of the best casting decisions that Christopher Nolan has ever 
has ever made. Because Robert Downey Jr. playing Louis Strauss, I mean, he does a fantastic job. Like he literally get goes on. Like he he was basically he was basically the enemy to Oppenheimer in this movie. Strauss is basically the driving force behind the controversial hearings that were held in April and May of 1954 in which uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer's security clearance was revoked. And as a result of that, Strauss was often regarded as the villain in American history. And Robert Downey Jr. really knocked it out of the ball, pa- ballpark for that, for, that, for that role. So congratulations to Robert Downey Jr., now moving moving forward to best supporting actress, the winner in that category will go to Davine Joy Randolph for uh, for the holdovers as Mary Lamb, and uh, Davine Joy Randolph beat out Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer, to which Emily Blunt played Catherine Catherine Kitty Oppenheimer, the wife to uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, Danielle Brooks for the color purple as Sophia. Jodie Foster for uh, Nyad as Bo- as as Bonnie Stoll, Julian Moore for May December, and Rosa Mon Pike for Saltburn. So congratulations to Davine Joy Randolph for the holdovers. Now now we move forward to best director. Now the Golden Globe now for best director the Golden Globe went to Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer, and I kind of saw this I, I kind of saw this I saw this coming. I mean, is there anything to say about Christopher Nolan? Christopher Nolan has made some of the best films you have ever seen. The Dark Knight, Inception, Dunkirk, so ma- Interstellar, and among many other movies. And sure, he does have his flaws too, like Tenants, for example. But Oppenheimer, many people consider Oppenheimer to be his magnum opus. And what else is there to say about that? Plus, uh, Christopher Nolan beat out Bradley Cooper for Maestro, Greta Gerwig for Barbie, Yorgos Lathimos for Poor, for Poor Things, Martin Scorsese for Kills of the Flower Moon, and Celine Song for Past Lives. Moving forward to Best Screenplay. The winner for Best Screenplay went to Justine Triet and Arthur Harari for Anatomy of, of a Fall, beating out Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach for Barbie, Poor Things, Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer, Eric Roth and Martin Scorsese for Kills of the Flower Moon, and Celine Song for Past Lives. Now we move forward to the we move forward to the last two categories for the Golden Globes, and that will be for Best Original Score and Best Original Song. So the winner, the winner for Best Original Score, went to Ludwig Göransson for Oppenheimer, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't know. I didn't know who was gonna win for best original score. To be honest, but I was surprised that Ludwig Göransson would would go on to win for best. Would go on to win the Golden Globe for best original score for the movie Oppenheimer. Like, I was, I was amazed because because uh, Ludwig Göransson he has composed some some great music. He has composed some great music. He's he has composed music for The Mandalorian. Black Panther, Creed, among many other films as well, including the Black Panther Wakanda Forever movie. Plus, he first collaborated with Christopher Nolan on Tenet. As for a Golden Globe, actually, he was nominated. He was actually nominated. He was not so this like so for Oppenheimer. It was actually his fourth nomination, but first win. So Ludwig Göransson won his first ever Golden Globe. And he was nominated for uh, Black Panther, Tenet, and and Lift Me Up from Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. So this is Ludwig Göransson's first ever Golden Globe win. So congratulations to Ludwig Göransson. And uh, Ludwig Göransson beat out Jerskin Fendrix for Poor Things, Joe Hasashi for The Boy and the Heron, Micah Levi for The Zone of Interest. Daniel Peverton for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, including Robbie Robertson for Killers of the Flower Moon. And uh, also, Robbie Robertson was posthumously nominated for Killers of the Flower Moon. So, Killers of the Flower Moon 
is Robbie Robertson's final, final, uh, final nomination and final Golden Globe nomination. So this is Robbie Robertson's fi- Pillars of the Flower Moon is Robbie Robertson's final film to 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 compose because he uh, passed away because he passed away due to due to prostate cancer at the age of 80. And for those of you who may or may not know, Robbie Robertson is a Canadian mus- musician and composer as well. He was lead guitarist for Bob Dylan in the mid late 1960s and early mid 1970s and he was a guitarist and songwriter with a band called The Band from their inception until 1978 and a solo artist. And then of course uh, Daniel Pemberton, I was kind of expecting Daniel Pemberton to go toe to toe with Ludwig Gorsen because Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse I thought it had the best music score in my opinion like the music went so hard in the action sequences like some of the action sequences went so hard with the music most notably miles morales's uh, fight with this with the spider society including um including spider-man 2099 plus um plus the uh the final few minutes of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the, the music went pretty, went really hard in that. Like, it had me on the edge of my seat. But to Ludwig Gorsen's credit, I had, I got the feeling Ludwig Gor, I, I gotta give Ludwig Gorsen credit because, because that opening, because the film's opening with the string section, got me chills. It literally got me chills, including some of some electric music composition as well. Literally, fantastic. Literally, fantastic. But anyway, moving forward to the final category for 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 the movies would be best original song, and the winner for and the winner for that one will go to Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell for "What I Was Made For" from from the movie Barbie, and um, and that's and 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 that song beat out "Addicted to Romance" by Bruce Springsteen from "She Came to Me," "Dance the Night Away," "Dance the Night Away" from Barbie, which was written by Mark Ronson, Andrew Wyatt, Dua Lipa, and Caroline Al- Aline. And of course, it also beat out another song from Barbie, "I'm Just Ken" by Mark Ronson and Andrew Wyatt. And of course, it also beat out "Road to Freedom." Beat out, beat out Road, Road to Freedom by Lenny Kravitz from Rustin. And then, of course, um, everybody's favorite song from the Super Mario Brothers movie. Peaches, 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 Peaches. That's right, Peaches. Peaches was nominated for Best Original Song from the Super Mario Brothers movie, which was written by Jack Black, Aaron Horvath, Michael Jelinek, Eric Osmond, and John Spiker. I'll be honest with you, Peaches was obviously one. I asked, Peaches was obviously one of the few go tos, and then Peaches was on on my radar to win the song. But once I'm, but once I heard "I'm Just Ken," I was rooting for that song. "I'm Just Ken" from Barbie, which was sung by Ryan Gosling and the other Ken variant. I had that for the win. I really wanted I'm I really wanted that song to win. I'm just Ken to win the Golden Globe because it's literally literally love that song. Mm, the music to that was mm, like I can't get that song out of my man. I can't get Peaches and I'm just Ken out of my head. They are both good songs. They're both good songs. But unfortunately, um But unfortunately Billy Eilish and Phineas O'Connell Came came in with with what I was made for for the Barbie movie as well. So congratulations to Barbie. So congratulations to Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell for for what I was made for from the Barbie movie. And that is it. That is and that is it. And that is it. Those are the category. Those are the film categories. Plus. Uh, that is the, those are the film categories. So, the bar. So going down to the nominations, the number the number of nominations. Barbie was nominated nominated for nine Golden Globes. Oppenheimer was nominated for eight Golden Globes. 
Killers of the Flower Moon and Poor Things were nominated for seven Golden Globes. Past Lives was nominated for five Golden Globes. Anatomy of the Fall, Maestro, and May December were nominated for four Golden Globes. The Holdovers, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and the Super the Super Mario Brothers movie, the Zone of and the Zone of Interest were nominated for three Golden Globes. And then Air, American Fiction, The Boy and the Heron, Color Purple, Fallen Leaves, Nyad, Rustin, and Saltburn were nominated for two Golden Globes. And in to- and for the films with multiple wins, Oppenheimer led led the award show with five wins, followed by Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, and Poor Things with two Golden Globe wins. So congratulations to so congra- congratulations to the films for winning the Golden Globes. And that is it. That is the movie. That is the movie topic for for the for, for the eighty first Golden Globe Awards. Now, now that's so. So that's so that's basically so that's basically it. That is basically it. Now, I'm pretty sure not a whole lot of people saw the Golden Globes, but I'm pretty sure there's there are there were some people who saw who watched the Golden Globes on who watched the Golden Globes last Sunday. But I just want to I want to ask this question. What did you guys think of the 81st Golden Globes? Did you like the Golden Globes? Did you not like the Golden Globes? I would love to hear your thoughts about this. And um, and also, also before I close out the episode, um, Kodo Cinema is on YouTube right now, so you could definitely check out my latest episodes on on my YouTube on my YouTube channels. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll leave a link. I'll leave a I'll leave a YouTube link in the, in the description. Of of my episode of my up of my episode just just so you can all just so you can all go check just so you can all go check it out and subscribe to and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well and please continue to check out my other streaming platforms for my podcast on Podbean, Spotify, Amazon, iHeart, and Player FM. A brand new season of Kodo Cinema has just begun, and that is a wrap on this episode. Thank you all for tuning in to Kodo Cinema. I'm your host, Mark Kodo, a.k.a. Kodo Man. Remember to watch movies, stay positive, and Season 6 of Kodo Cinema has just begun.